Getting into LCD resin 3D printing. I got into resin 3D printing in the spur of the moment trying to solve a problem that at the time FDM 3D printing could not solve for me. Eventually I solved the problem with FDM but I kept my Kitty Tech Shadow Pro 6.0. Alright, make sure your resin 3D printer is located on a leveled surface. Liquids tend to pull on one side. Not all resin 3D printers have a way of detecting low resin or maybe just very few of them have that ability. Also, not all or very few 3D printers or resin 3D printers have demarcations for showing when the vat is full or how much to fill your resin vat with resin. Pitfalls. There are a few pitfalls that some may assume just like me. 1. Supports may be required only for overhangs. Not true. Supports are required 99.99% of the time. However, choosing the right 3D printer that can be fitted with a flex plate if supported may mitigate the supports issue. 2. Resin evaporates, not without light. This is why a separate curing light is necessary in case you transport wet models around and then you drop stuff on the floor or whatever. 3. Smaller models take less time than larger ones. Not true. It is the layer count that adds to time. Each layer, regardless of its size, takes the same amount of time to print or cure, which is 6 to 10 seconds, depending on resin. 4. Resin 3D printing is more precise than FDM 3D printing, and what you see is what you get. For the most part, that is true. However, there are a few important exceptions that need clarification. We are only talking about LCD resin 3D printing, which is faster and sometimes faster than FDM 3D printing because of the 7 seconds curing layer, blah, blah, blah. In FDM 3D printing, you can have the base of the model as well as the top of the model flat. However, in resin 3D printing, you only get one side that can get quite flat. I mean, like shiny flat. Well, also in uh, FDM, if you have a glass plate. The opposite side cannot get that flat because of supports. In resin 3D printing, you always have to print supports. And that is why I wanted to let you know of inherent pitfalls with resin 3D printers or gotchas. Extras to have. In general, resin 3D printing requires a lot more space to deal with its complex workflow. Ideally is to have a workshop with a double sink, lots of workbench space and the works. Extra resin vats for your 3D printer and extra base plate for your 3D printer model. In an apartment, you need some sort of outdoors, a balcony or some sort of outside area where you can air your models and not have the models stink up your place. Consumables. Well, you need FEP films and LCD screens. Health concerns. Resin 3D printing comes with very serious health concerns. On a brief research, apparently resin is not carcinogenic, but it's better to be safe than sorry at a later date. However, repeated exposure to resin has a threshold. Once you cross the threshold, you cannot go back. And once you become sensitized to the chemical sensitivities, then you can get triggered by other chemicals rather than a resin. So try to not cross that threshold. And apparently not everything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Apparently it weakens you. So keep that in mind. Now we're going to expand on the tools and parts. One, ventilation. You need some way of moving the smell out of your printing area. Some resin smells unbearably bad and will give you headaches or make the room uninhabitable. So at the minimum, put the printer by the window, have a big flam blow on it to move the air out. I'm going to put the lid on top so it doesn't stink up the place. I have a fan going in the background, so... I'm going to hit the fumes or the smell. Two, you need a workbench with cardboard or a specialized mat to pry the models off and handle them and so on and so forth and preventing the resin from spilling all over the wood and stuff. That's why you need at least cardboard or a specialized mat. Cardboard is free. Three, you need the prying tools to remove the models. And the number five, artist palette knife or number 12. Off to the build plate. seems to work the best for me. I bought the whole set, but that's the only one I use. Try to keep all tools handles wrapped in paper towels and change them from time to time or leave them in daylight to cure the resin or you can cure them with your extra curing UV lamp. Get the big one, the 40 watt one. Liquid resin cleaning container. The pickle jar or any jar with the lid that seals the jar, a pair of tongs or a lobster scissor work quite well. 
it is better to kind of wrap the tips of the scissor and tongs with uh, some sort of rubber so you do not damage your models while you handle them or squish them. Five, a cleaning slash curing station is better because it does most of the cleaning for you and some people have opted for the ultrasonic cleaners. I saw a video online where actual person had all of the technologies and apparently the cleaning curing station was better however with the ultrasonic cleaners you can have water in the main vat and then you can have a sealed jar with isopropyl alcohol and you can use less depending on your model rather than filling the entire ultrasonic cleaner vat with ipa which is isopropyl alcohol now i'm going to take these assholes and put them in some unholy chemical that's going to fucking destroy the planet so you can get both or just whatever six an additional uv lamp for odd jobs should come in handy as i said also some way of decanting the isopropyl alcohol and the uv lamp together to kind of cure the resin inside of ipa and then you can strain it and reuse it seven you need two types of gloves at the minimum the reusable large and long dishwasher gloves that you can just slide on and remove by shaking your hands so basically large ones you can wash them while wearing them and also you can cure them with your lamp to make sure that there's no particles of uh, uncured resin the reusable gloves are for the entire process handling the base plate everything but the food gloves are just for like odd jobs that you forgot to do or something and you don't want to handle the model or whatever or the handles with the bare hand you slap one of those food gloves and then you discard Number eight, lots of consumables. Ziploc bags to store cured items. Cured resin still stinks. And the more you have, like the more additional mass of cured items you have, the faster the smell evaporates and, you know, it can fill up a space. But it's actually better if you smell it because if you don't smell it and you become nose blind to it, you can inhale that for hours and hours and hours. And I don't know what are the repercussions to that in addition you need paper towels galore cheap and not so cheap isopropyl alcohol in the gallons range and containers for decanting and reusing the ipa cups for unforeseen mishaps paper strainers to strain the resin out of the vats when things fall in the vats or failed prints fall in the vats or parts or whatever broken stuff plastic spatulas to gently use in the vats and I mean gently. The FEP film is very sensitive. Nine, your printer may come with sheet to box, but paying for a formware 3D slicer may make your life much easier. It is just better and it has support. And I mean, it's supported by a team of people. You can download the full functioning 30 day trial and use it, but after that, you're probably gonna purchase it. Extras to have a lot more space and benchtop areas, a workshop with a sink and ventilation and proper enclosures, extra resin vats and build plates for your 3D printer model. This should also determine your purchase, the availability of extra parts and replacement parts and upgrades. If you are in an apartment, you need some minimal outdoor door space and maybe a second bathroom a flex base attachment to attempt printing without supports and improving the removal process and the success rate however the flex plate like the wham bam manufacturer has to support your 3d printers base plate size so that is another purchasing decision you have to keep in mind the 3d printers resin vats fep films need to be changed from time to time so you need FEP films for your particular vat and the patient to change them. I just used to buy a new vat and that is when you have a 3D printer that they sell spare parts for. So that is why having extra vats makes your life easier when that time comes to change the FEP film. In addition, having extra base plates may help if you want to run a small production line of models for whatever reason. Also, the LCD screens need to be changed from time to time. I don't know how many hours, 500, 1000, 2000, whatever. They're making improvements, but you still have to change them. It depends how much you use the printer. All right, the 3D printing process. I have found that in resin 3D printing, there are two first layers, each with its concerns. So the absolute first layer that sticks on the base plate and the first layer after supports, which is the first layer within your model. That is how I will differentiate between the two. In resin 3D printing, models are totally suspended away from the base plate by supports that attach directly to the base plate or a 3D printed raft on the base plate. And that is because the first few layers have to be cured for a longer period of time to prevent failures. That makes the models difficult to remove from the base plate and very easy to chip in the process of removal. So to prevent, we use supports and rafts. 
you have to use some elbow grease to pry the models off the base plate. Supports are 99.99% required in resin 3D printing. However, a flex plate may mitigate the issue. I have seen most people 3D print figurines and things that do not have a lot of flat surfaces and for that resin 3D printing is excellent. But when you need a flat surface then supports get in the way of things. So the first layer after supports is the first layer of your model. If that needs to be flat then you need a lot of supports to hold it in place because that layer only cures for 7 to 10 seconds and it also allows it to flex inside the resin as it moves through the resin. And its shape cannot be 100% predicted even with supports. It's like a sheet in the wind. So it may not be perfectly flat and that is how a flex plate may help because then the absolute first layer on the base plate doesn't need to have supports on it. It becomes the only first layer if you need a flat surface. Furthermore, without the flex plate, the first layer after supports flexes and in addition light seeps through it and the resin behind it gets cured on it. And that is how you cannot get a predictable flat layer after supports. Furthermore, as the first layer after supports moves through the resin, its shape can change and as the next layer from it gets cured the first layer after supports also gets a little light which makes it harder and if its shape isn't the desired one it got harder with a kind of misaligned shape and that's how the process works which resin 3d printer to choose you have to be mindful of spare parts availability like vats base plates fab films and lcd replacement screens when you get an lcd resin 3d printer also you need to check the specifications and see if the resin 3d printer has a low resin sensor and i think that's quite expensive and or demarcations inside the resin vats once the base plate gets inside you know you get more resin so you don't want to spill so that's a delicate balance right there in addition you have to think if third-party manufacturers support your 3d printer with upgrades that may improve your workflow and make your life easier that is how you choose a 3D printer. For example, I am very interested on the Wham Bam Flex system for resin 3D printers and I hope they soon support my Kitty Tech Shadow 6 Pro. But until then, I bid Dimon Ami's farewell and adieu.